Hello, everybody in King Television. This is Eric Smith, and I'm so excited for today's Next Generation broadcast because we have three men of God that I know have been praying, that have been going after the Lord on your behalf today because we, we believe today is going to be an amazing day of victory, a day of breakthrough, a day of miracles, a day of salvation for everyone that, that, that gets a chance to listen and watch this broadcast today because the Bible says it this way. The Bible says the Word does not return void, but will always accomplish what it's sent forth to do. And we know when the Word goes forth, good things take place. Salvations do happen. Miracles happen. People get delivered and set free bondages get just broken off people's lives and off their bodies so guess what today is going to be that day today but i always like to encourage people as we all as we come on air to be thinking about someone else beside yourself the bible says we're supposed to prefer our brother and sister above ourselves and what i want you to do is think about some people right now maybe a family member maybe a co-worker could be a could be could be your neighbor but listen, think about people you know have been maybe struggling physically. Maybe they're battling things like fibromyalgia. Maybe it's maybe it's arthritis. Maybe it's a heart disease. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's diabetes. If the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but the second half of John 10:10 10, 10 says it this way, but Jesus has come to give us life and life abundantly. So listen, let's give people a chance at abundant life today. They can't be touched by the Lord unless they're on this broadcast. And guess what? God can use you today to be a, an, an evangelist, so to speak. I'm not going to ask you to speak because these three men of God got that covered. But I am going to ask you to use your faith for somebody else. Again, reach out to four or five or six people if you can. Tell them the way you're watching King TV because you can watch this amazing network through so many different ways, through satellite uh, television, through cable television, through Roku, Apple TV. There's about 20 ways you can watch King Television. But tell them the way you're watching and tell them, listen, just give me one hour of your time today, and I believe God's going to touch you in a powerful way. And I know God's going to honor his word to do just that. So please do that if you would. I want to introduce our three speakers today. Our first pastor is a wonderful man of God. This is Pastor William Gibbons coming to us from Buckhead Life Church, based in Atlanta, Georgia. Pastor Gibbons, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, please share with the worldwide audience with God's with your ministry, sir. Yes, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here on King Television today. We uh, pastor here in Atlanta, Georgia at Buckhead Life Church and also uh, uh, our sending arm, Givens Family Ministries. And so we're excited about that. Just excited about the opportunity. The Lord is 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 always talking to us about growing the body. That's the mandate he's given to us. Get the word out and grow the body. And and uh, we're talking to, uh, to we're, we're ministering to marriages and to the next gen. That's kind of our our. Uh, our our main focus there and so we get excited about those things and are thankful to the lord for it and uh, to be called for such a time as this and thank you again for the opportunity to be here today amen amen well thank you so much pastor gibbons appreciate your time today i know you're very busy and i can't wait to hear the message guys give today for king television appreciate you very much sir our second pastor is another powerful man of god this is pastor jordan bradford he's a senior pastor of the refuge church based in pomeroy ohio Pastor Jordan, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, please share the word about Audits with guys with your ministry as well. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, Brother Smith, and let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You know, God's doing incredible things around the globe. I believe that we are in the end times or the time of the end, and that Everything is wrapping up. God's separating the wheat from the tares throughout his body. He's speaking to the hearts of men and women around the globe, getting people ready, because soon and very soon, he's coming back for his church, known as the rapture. But before that, it is a tale of two stories. It's the best of times for those of us that are in Christ, and it's the worst of times for those that are in the world. And so, what God's doing in our ministry is accelerating. He's accelerating our ministry, and we're seeing breakthroughs. We're seeing new doors open up. We're seeing God speak to the hearts and the minds of the people, not only in our local area, but also regionally as uh, we've planted another church uh, in Parkersburg, West Virginia, and things are going great there, seeing God touch lives, bring families back together. If you were to come and sit in our church services, uh, 90 plus percent of our people are people that were one either off the street or people that had never had an encounter with Christ before. They don't come from a religious background. And so God is literally setting the captive free. Uh, and we're just excited to be a part of what he's doing. 
And so thank you, uh, Brother Smith and uh, Smith Media Group, King Television, for this wonderful opportunity. And we know today many, many people are going to come to the Lord. They're going to be set free, delivered, healed, filled with the Holy Spirit. So I want everyone to get your expectations up right now. Call your friends and family because God's going to speak to hearts and change lives today. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Jordan. Excited to hear how God's using you. And I can't wait to hear the message God's giving today for King Television. Appreciate you very much, sir. Our third and final speaker is another powerful man of God. This is Pastor Will Jones. He's the outreach pastor for God is Reaching Out Ministries based in Atlantic City, uh, New Jersey. Uh, pastor Will, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would share with one or two minutes what God's doing with your ministry as well. Got you muted, Pastor Will. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, thank you for having me on uh this at this afternoon. Um, it's a it's an honor. Um, I'm I'm very humble. Um, our ministry, uh, God, God is reaching out ministries. That God is always reaching out for us. So it's our job to reach out to someone else. So um, at our ministry, we do a lot of uh, street ministry. We go out and um, we feed the homeless. We give them clothes. We give them um, food. We give them we give them the word. And, um, you know, we just we just love on them and hug on them. You know, um, a lot of a lot of people don't uh, a lot of churches don't don't really like our ministry because we 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 care for the broken. You know, um, I was once broken. Um, you know, I come from a dark side of life myself. So how can I not uh, go and go out and uh, get someone else? You know, um, we're saved to serve. Amen. And uh, that's what our ministry is about. Um, our our uh, mission statement is transforming a life today for a better tomorrow. So um, that's what our mission uh, statement is about. And that's what our ministry is about. And thank you for having me. And um, I'm excited. I'm excited. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much, Pastor. We'll appreciate what you're doing there for the community there in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and surrounding cities. And uh, just can't wait to hear the message God's giving to every King Television. Thanks so much, sir. Before I have Pastor Givens begin to speak, I, I asked you maybe four or five minutes ago to reach out to four or five, six people. I'm going to ask you again, if you haven't reached out to somebody, please, please, uh, let's give people a chance to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Let's give people a chance to have a breakthrough, have to be delivered and set free, because that's what God does. The Bible says the gospel is good news. We want to give good news out to literally tens of millions of people, and we are doing that right now. But I, I wouldn't mind to see tens of millions of additional people join the network, because if you just reach one more person, two more people, can you imagine we went from 10 million to 30 million people watching this broadcast today, and you can have a part in that. Think about the harvest. Think about someday we're going to be in heaven someday, and the only thing we take with us is souls. So please, reach out to some people, encourage them to watch King Television. I believe today they're going to see a breakthrough. They're going to see a transformation. We're going to see God touch them in a powerful way, and you will have a part in their salvation, their experience the, to be impacted by God himself because you reached out to them. And thank you so much for doing it. Again, our first speaker coming out of the gate, this is Pastor William Gibbons from Buckhead Life Church based in Atlanta, Georgia. Pastor William, thanks so much for joining us today on King TV. If you would, bring forth the message God's given today for this amazing network. Amen. Again, thank you there, uh, Brother Eric, for the opportunity to be here today. I want to talk a, a little bit about uh, faithfulness, and uh, but I want to take a little time to build up to that and uh, look here at the story of Moses in Exodus. Um, kind of leading up to it, Moses is uh, um, born in, in the house of the priest, and um, at a time when when babies are being uh, killed and and murdered, and so. Uh, uh, Moses' parents come up with this this bright God idea to put Moses in a basket and um, and send him out on the waters. Now you gotta <laughs> you gotta you gotta know God to do that, but nonetheless, that's what they do. And uh, Moses makes it to the palace and is long story short raised up in the palace. Finds out who his people are and then winds up going out. Um, into the wilderness for the second 40 years of his life. And then we 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 meet Moses here in a, Exodus chapter three, where he sees this bush that is burning, but isn't being consumed. And then he has this dialogue with God. And we're going to pick up in Exodus chapter three <clears throat> and verse number nine. It says, now, therefore, behold the cry 
Behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. I want to take a pause here for a quick moment and say one thing the Lord said to me uh, sometime back, a little recently. He said, in order for these Bible stories to begin to have a major impact in your life, you're going to have to, William, you're going to have to begin to see these as real life stories, not just something that happened to somebody somewhere, but you're going to have to understand that these are real people experiencing real life things. And and as we continue to share this story in the book of Exodus, I, I want you to say, all right, this, this isn't just a story about a something that happened to a man sometime way back when, but that God is looking for a Moses in our generation right now. He's looking for somebody that is willing to heed his voice, hear his call, and then obey what he says to do. And I believe that God is looking for that in every generation. My question is, is that person you? Are you the one that God is looking to? Are you the one that God is calling forth today to do something great in your land, in your day, in your time? Yes, Esther was born for such a time as this, but that was a long time ago. And I believe that God is still on the move today, that he's still working in the lives of people today, that he's still working in kingdoms, that he's still working in countries and like yours and mine, and that he needs people like you and I who are willing to believe that, yes, Esther was but we too were born for such a time as this. And so here we are in Moses' story. We continue in verse 10. He says, uh, the Lord says to Moses, he says, come now, therefore, and I will send you unto Pharaoh that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel out of Egypt. I want to say something to you, man. God is always looking to bring us up and to bring us out. It doesn't matter what the bondage is. It doesn't matter how long you've been there. It doesn't matter how many generations were there before you. God is looking to bring you up and to bring you out. Those children of Israel had been there long enough and God said, I've heard their cry and now is the time for them to come up and come out. I want to say to you, man, wherever you are, no matter how bad you think it is right now, I want to, I got a word from the Lord for you. The Lord wants you to come up and the Lord wants you to come out. In verse 11, the story continues and it says, and Moses said unto God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel up out of Egypt. Now, I know we've all been in this place at least once or twice where we felt like God was calling us to do something, but we seen it, it, it seemed too big a thing for us. We seemed too small for the task. We seen uh, our lives and, and the purpose thereof seemed too insignificant to be a part of accomplishing the larger plan and purposes of God. Moses felt the same way. I felt the same way. And I know there are many that are out there listening today that you feel the same way. But I want to encourage you with the same words that the Lord encouraged Moses with. The story continues in verse 12. And he says, certainly I will be with you. Can I pause for just a moment? Man, yeah, you you may be, what you're thinking may be small potatoes. What, what you're feeling may be small on the inside. But I want to tell you something. When it's you and God, you are the majority. Ah, oh my goodness. I want to say that again. When it's you and God, you are the majority. I'm telling you, all of Egypt's against Moses, my goodness, including the Pharaoh, their leader. And at times, all of Israel is against Moses, including all of the leaderships. But the Lord said to Moses, I will be with you. And suddenly, the man that had run away to escape in the wilderness now becomes the majority because he has God on his side. And so the odds may be stacked against you. I realize that, but I want you to know something with God on your side, you have suddenly become the majority. And now you can do things you couldn't do before. The story continues in verse 13, uh, what actually says, uh, I will be with you and this shall be the token that I have sent you when you were brought forth the people up out of Israel to serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said, God, behold, when, when the, when I come to the children of Israel and say unto them that the God of your fathers has sent me, they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he says, thus shall you say unto the, the children of Israel, I am has sent me. 
Now, I want to take another pause just real quick. Some of you might have the question, like, God says, I am. Well, what, what does that mean? What is he? What does it mean to be the I am? Well, the question is, uh, not what does it mean, but what do you need? My goodness, when you were a sinner and you needed a savior, he said, I am your savior. My goodness, when you had sickness in your body, he said, I am your healer. Glory be to God. When you were wrapped with confusion and depression in your mind, he said, I am your soundness of mind. Glory be to God. He is your everything. He is the great I am, and he will be to you whatever it is that you need. Glory be to Almighty God. The Bible says that he supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And isn't it something to think that glory be to God? He will provide those needs with himself. He will be the healer. He will be the deliverer. He will be the help. Glory be to Almighty God. The story continues. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And you tell them that I am sent you. And God said, Said, moreover, thus shall, and God said, moreover unto Moses, thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, the Lord your God, the God of father of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob appear to me saying, I have surely visited you and, and seen that which has been done unto you in Egypt. Now, God says to Moses something quite simple. Hey, I've heard the cries of the people, and now I'm calling you to go and help the people, knowing that I'm going to be with you. I, I, I will be with you throughout this whole process. I will be to the people. I will be to you what you need, and I will be to the people what they need. Go. Now, Moses goes on, and he's like, I don't know about this, but God says go. And you may be at a place, too, where you know God has called you to do something. You're like, ah. I, I, I don't know, but I want to encourage you to like Moses go. You had your doubts. You had your, you thought about it once or twice, but I'm, I'm encouraging you today to go to do what it is that the Lord has called you to do. Now, Moses does that and he goes to do what the Lord called him to do. And then uh, we got the 10 plagues, they come up and, and then all of a sudden the children of Israel, they, they, the, they leave out of Egypt, but they find themselves stuck between, we say a proverbial rock and a hard place, but they are literally in between a sea and the most elite fighting force on the planet in the day, in that day and time. And, and they, they, they got to figure out what it is that they're going to do in this situation. And they cry out to Moses and Moses cries out to the Lord. And the Lord says something very interesting to me. Uh, in chapter 14, he says to Moses, why are you crying to me? Boy, lift up the rod. Hallelujah. And when Moses lifts up the rod, the Bible says that the church children of Israel walk through the Red Sea on dry ground. And I want to pick up in Exodus chapter 14 and verse number 24. And it says, and it came to pass that in the morning, watch that the Lord looked onto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariots their chariot wheels and drave them heavily so that the Egyptians says, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. I just want to pause and make a quick note. I told you when it, if, if you want, if you fighting by yourself, but you got God on your side, suddenly you become the majority. The children, the, the, the Egyptians says, let us get out of here. God is fighting with these people. Hallelujah. Verse 26, it says, and the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth your hand uh, over the sea and the, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians and upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And so Moses did exactly that. In verse uh, 28, it says, And the water returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and the host of the of Pharaoh that came into the sea, that there remained not one of them, but the children of Israel 
walked on dry land in the middle of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and the left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead in the seashore, and Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Now, I find this to be quite an interesting story. You know, I said in the beginning that we're talking about faithfulness, and, and here, here's, here's what I see. Uh, God told Moses, he says, I've heard the cries of the people, and now I'm calling you to do something about it. Don't be afraid because I'm going to be with you in this process. And so Moses steps out. First thing he does is lift up his hand and then he takes a step out into the sea. And the Bible said that they he stepped out, he and all the children of Israel, onto dry ground. You know, I was in Israel not too long ago and uh, the Lord said these words to me. He said, you know, I am looking for men and women who are willing to be faithful. You know, a, a lot of times we are um, asking God and wondering, you know, if God is going to be faithful to us. And we got this question and we got that question. But the real thing is, uh, are we going to be faithful to God? It's not God's character that is into question that that should be into question anyways, but rather what we are going to do. You know, God said to Moses, I'm going to be with you and I've called you to do this thing. And 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 as soon as Moses stepped out on the word that God gave him, God showed himself faithful to do exactly what he said he was going to do. And, and, and I want to encourage you today that no matter how difficult it seems, no matter where you might be in life, I want to encourage you to take that step. What is it that God has called you to do? God is going to be faithful. If God said he's going to do something, God's going to do exactly what he said. But the question is, will you lift the rod? Will you, will you have enough faith on the inside of you to lift up a stick standing in front of a red sea? Will you will you have the faith within you to step out into that water, trusting that that ground is going to be dry, knowing that over a million people are following behind you? Now, on that trip in Israel, uh, this lady, this young lady, asked me. She said, "How do you feel uh, uh, when you're you're here and you are you are doing your your tour, your sacred tour, and you see people walking the streets and buying tomatoes?" And that question stuck with me for a little bit, and I, I wanted to know how I felt about that. How do I feel about people walking the streets and buying tomatoes on a land I, I consider so holy? And here's what the Lord said to me. He said, do you know that in the days of Elijah, I'm talking about uh, when the fire came down from heaven and sucked up all the water out of the trench, man, we saw a, a mighty move of God that day. My goodness, it was wonderful. He said, did you know that there were people in those days walking the streets and buying tomatoes. You know, David, that man was a man after my own heart. He didn't always get it right, but he was quick to repent. I want to be quick to repent. But do you? did you know that in those days of David being quick to repent and being a faithful shepherd boy to me, that there were people walking the streets and buying tomatoes? Even when Jesus himself walked those streets, there were people walking the streets and buying tomatoes. He said, it's not a matter of people walking the streets and buying tomatoes. It is a matter of men and women after my own heart who are willing to be faithful to me, even while they themselves and others are walking the streets and buying tomatoes. So my question to you is in the day that you are living right now, God is still sitting on the throne. But will you be one who's willing to be faithful while everybody else is walking the streets and buying tomatoes? Will you be sensitive to his voice? Will you obey his words? Will you do the things that he's commanded you to do? Because I can assure you of this, God is going to be faithful. The Bible says that when we are faithless, he remains faithful still. He will always be faithful. What he's calling us to do what he's calling on us to do is to be faithful too. You know, today I want to give you an opportunity with the remaining few minutes that I have to accept Jesus and to make him the Lord of your life. 
The best, the most faithful thing you can do in all of your existence is to say, Father God, I know, I see, I recognize the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, him coming to the earth, living a sinless life and dying on the cross for my sinful self. And you say, I yield to that. My goodness, forgive me, Father, of all my sins, falling short of your riches and glory. I repent, I repent. The Lord said, if you will pray that prayer, man, he will receive you into his eternal family forever. If you haven't made that decision, I want to give you an opportunity to do exactly that right now. Pray with me if you would. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I repent of my sins. I make you, I make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. I ask you to take my life and do something with it. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit till I overflow. And I confess, I am saved. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Glory be to God, man. If you pray that simple prayer with us, my goodness, you, you are in the family of God. He is excited. I am excited. We're all here at King Television. We're excited with you. We want to ask you to uh, call that number on the bottom of your screen and let them know that uh, you got saved. You, you made that, that, that decision for Christ. Now, one last thing I want to do, I want to pray for you. You got saved, man. You're in heaven with God, but I'm telling you what, there's no reason to go to heaven with that sickness, with that disease with that depression, with that anything. You can go, you can, you can go and meet your maker healed and whole. Ah, right, so if you would just take your hands and, and, and put them here in a surrender position as I pray over you for healing in your body. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we speak healing over your people. We speak healing and life to them. We it's like the prophet was asked the question, can these bones live? We say that these bones live. They come alive. They are full of the spirit of the living God. They are healed. They are whole. And they are full of the life of almighty God. Healing, wholeness, resurrection, new life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Pastor Givens. Powerful, powerful message. Now listen, do what the man of God has told you to do. If you just received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's the greatest prayer you can ever pray. Welcome to the family of God. The Bible now says your name is written what's called the Lamb's Book of Life. And that means when you get to heaven someday, we're all going to stand before God someday and give an account for what we've done. Here's what you're going to hear if you prayed that prayer. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. That's what we all want to hear. That's what you're going to hear if you pray that prayer with Pastor William. What a what a great day that is. You know, the Bible now says that God has thrown your sins as far as the east is from the west, which simply means this. God looks at you right now. doesn't make a difference if you're age 80, you're age 50, you're age 20. God looks at you right now as if you've never sinned before. Think about that. That's what Jesus has done by shedding his blood on that cross. He, he shed his blood for my sins and for your sins. What a Savior we serve. And it also, as, as, as Pastor Gibbons was praying, uh, you know, the Bible talks about that the, 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 by the stripes that Jesus bore, we are healed. We were healed, the Bible says. Uh, Isaiah 53, uh, verse 5, 1 Peter 2, 24. So guess what? I encourage you to check yourself right now. I believe you've been touched. You've been healed. I believe pain has left your body. And if pain has left your body, do me a favor. Call the number on your screen as well and tell King TV, hey, here's this is what God has just done for me. Talk about what maybe what the devil put on you, but guess what? God Himself has just taken it off. Let's let's don't delay. The Bible says there's life and death in the power of our tongue. Use your tongue today to give God praise for what He's done. Listen, the devil will tell you, oh, just call back tomorrow, the next day. I promise you'll never do it. Do it now. The Bible says now faith is. If you receive Christ, now you're going to use your faith for the, for the first time to receive Christ. And I believe today, you know, the Bible, Brother Shemak used to say it this way. That healing and salvation are the Siamese twins of the gospel, which means when you come to Christ, you can expect healing as well because Jesus has paid that price for you. So you don't have to live with that sickness anymore. It can be delivered and set free for you today. And I believe it has been for many of you today. So if that's you, please, please call the number on your screen and give God praise for what he's done for you. Thanks so much, Pastor Givens. Appreciate you very, very much, sir. Our second speaker today is another powerful man of God. Get ready, King TV. This is Pastor Jordan Bradford coming from the Refuge Church. Pastor Jordan, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, please bring forth the message God's given today for King TV. Wow. Thank you, 
Brother Eric, and, and what a powerful word we just heard from Pastor Givens. Just incredible. Thank you, Jesus. want to thank uh, Pastor John, Pastor Rachel, in television for the work that you're doing to reach people around the world with the message of the gospel. It's remarkable. It's inspiring. It's life-changing. And thank you. Thank you to Smith Media Group for a hunger to facilitate this. You know, Brother Smith heard from the Lord through a time of prayer how to do this, how to get the gospel out in a way that I don't think has ever really happened, certainly not on this scale ever before. And it's incredible. And he's bringing uh, really unique ministers uh, from around the United States and other parts of the world to speak to a global audience. And it's incredible. And it is a sign of the time of the end. And so I, I just want to uh, take a few moments and I want to ask all of our viewers today, everyone that's watching a few questions, and I want to help you to answer those questions because I believe that whether you've realized it, been able to conceptualize it in your mind yet, your spirit man knows that there are these questions and that they must be answered. Well, how could you say that, Pastor? Well, the Bible tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 11, that God has placed eternity in the heart of every person, every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. You have an internal clock that is ticking, and you know that your time here on earth is limited. Even as a child, I used to think about this. And you know, as when we're young people, especially, we feel invincible. That's why we ride our bikes like a kamikaze down the hill and crash and scrape our knees and whatever it is that you do in your culture where you are, certainly as children, teenagers, and young adults, we take more risks than we do as we get older because we feel invincible. We have youth on our side. But even as a child and even as a young person, in the quietness and in the calmness of the night, you have a sense of eternity and that life is not forever here on this earth and that there is something greater than just the mundane, getting up in the morning, going to school, going to work, taking care of the bills, taking all the wonderful things that we do in life, but you have a sense that there is more than that. What is that? That is that eternity that's placed in the heart of every single person. So I want to ask you some questions, and I want to help you to answer these questions. Number one, are things changing rapidly in the earth? Are things changing rapidly? I don't know what you know about world events or what's happening even in your nation or your land, but certainly you could say that, yes, things have shifted dramatically over the past 10, 15, 20 years, things have changed dramatically. But especially since 2020, there has been an acceleration of change that has touched the entire globe and everything is different today. So the answer to that question is yes, things are changing rapidly. Things are changing rapidly in the earth and you you haven't you know, gone crazy you, you know you, you maybe you've been asking yourself the question have i changed or are people changing are circumstances changing no the whole world is in a season of great shifting i want to help answer another question is there an end to all things is there an end to everything is there an end to time is there an end to life as we know it here on the earth? Is there life after death? And the answer to all of those questions is emphatically yes. In fact, we sum it up in a quote in America. You may say this in your country, but we say all good things must come to an end. All good things must come to an end. And so there is an end to all things. There is an end to life, no matter how young or how Invincible, you may feel there is an end to life, and there is life after death, and you have two options. You can have life 
eternal with Christ Jesus. You can have life eternal in heaven where you meet the saints of old and all of your family members that died in Christ. Or there is life eternal in hell. And that is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth that no one wants to go to because it was not created for mankind. The Bible says clearly that hell was created for the devil and his angels. I've had people ask me the question, Pastor, if you serve a loving God, why would he create hell and send man there? Well, he created hell as an eternal punishment for the devil and his angels, and God sends no man to hell. Men send themselves to hell because they choose not to believe and accept the free gift of grace and salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. And if those first questions are answered with yes, if things are changing rapidly in the earth, if there's an end to all things, if there is life after death, then what will happen just before or at the time of the end? What comes next? What do I need to be looking for? How can I know, Pastor, if I'm at the time of the end? Well, first of all, we started with Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. And I meet people every day, and these great men of God that are watching would say the same thing. I meet people every day by the dozens and dozens, and all of them, all of them, the conversation inevitably comes down to, you know, things are really changing I think that Jesus is coming back. These are people, many of which have never gone to church, and they tell me, uh, Brother Eric, they, they tell me, you know, I never believed in God, but with everything that's happening in the world, I knew that the devil must be real, and if the devil's real, then God must be real. People, there's a, an awakening in the hearts of mankind, so that eternity that's in your heart— that's one way that you know. But the Bible also tells us the super sign of Bible prophecy that you would know that you're living in the last days. Jesus said, when you see the fig tree blossom or bloom, and that he's speaking about Israel there. When you see Israel become a nation again, when you see Israel come back, the people of Israel come back to the nation, begin to found the nation of Israel, happened in 1948. President Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital. That was something significant that had to happen in Bible prophecy. Jesus said, the generation that sees that come to pass will not all depart or die before he returns for his church. So we are living in the final moments of time here on this earth. I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm trying to warn you to let you know what's next so that we can be prepared because I want to invite you or give you an invitation to the event of the ages in just a few moments. And I want to pray with you and for you. Not only is Jesus going to save your soul, but he's also going to heal your body. He's going to totally deliver you mind, body, and spirit. There are those that have been oppressed by the devil, those that have been oppressed in sickness and disease, mental problems. There are even those watching now that are possessed but you're captivated. Jesus is going to set you free in just a few moments. And then there are those that are watching. You're going to receive the glorious gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you're going to receive power after that comes upon you to live in such a way that you never have before. So what's going to happen next? How do I know I'm in the last days? Well, Christ, first of all, we see that he told us that Israel would be restored as a nation. That's happened. So if that's so, then what comes next? What happens at the end of time? Well, Jesus is going to come in the rapture, and he's going to remove all born-again believers, all of the blood-washed born-again believers from the earth just before the Great Tribulation. You can read about that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 18. The Bible says it happens in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. You don't have time to get ready as it's happening. You have to be ready beforehand. And that's what these messages are all about. And then the Bible says that we're going to heaven for seven years. There's going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb. There's going to be the judgment seat of Christ, where all believers will be rewarded for their works, the things they did for him here on this earth. It's going to be a great time of celebration. 
going to be an incredible time. You can read about that in 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 11, uh, or chapter 3, verses 11 through 15, and 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. During that time that we're in heaven, the Antichrist is going to rule and reign. He's going to sign a covenant, a deal, a bargain with Israel for seven years. But right in the middle of that, he, you're going to see his true colors, and he's going to attack Israel. And it's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. You can read about that in Jeremiah 30 and 7. In fact, Jesus said in the book of Matthew that it's going to be a time worse than has ever happened to anyone here on the earth. You don't want to be on the earth for that time. You don't want to miss the rapture. You want to make sure that you know that you know that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And after that seven years, Christ is coming to defeat the devil and to bind him in a bottomless pit for a thousand years. And he will set up his millennial kingdom on the earth and we will rule and reign with him. So what comes next? What has to happen next before the rapture of the church can take place, Pastor Bradford? How close are we? Can I tell you that there's not one thing left on God's prophetic calendar that has to take place before the rapture of the church can happen? He can come back at any moment, but he's giving us time, a space of time, so that we can repent, so that we can get everybody that would accept Jesus to accept him, because he's not willing that any should perish, that any should be lost, but that all should have everlasting life. And so what do I need to do to be ready? How can I know that I know that I'm ready to meet Jesus? How can I know, Pastor Bradford, that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Well, there is an invitation that's going out during our time here today to every person that's watching. And that invitation is, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my burden upon you, because my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Is light. Wherever you are, whatever you've been going through, whatever background you may have, Jesus is calling you today. And he's saying, come. Come unto me. I'll give you rest. I'll make you whole. I'll be your healer. I'll be your provider. I'll be your savior. I'll be your deliverer. I'll be everything that you need me to be when you need me to be that. And you may say, well, pastor, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I come from. You don't, you don't know what my life is like and what my family's life is like. And you're right. I don't. And I don't need to know because Jesus knows. And he will accept you and he will change you. He will rewrite your destiny. He will change everything about you through his blood. He'll give you a new life. He'll give you a new name. He'll give you a new hope. He'll give you a new future. Everything will be different when you come to Christ. Because see, the greatest invitation that the earth has ever received is the invitation to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. You don't want to miss this event. It's the greatest event of the ages. It is the greatest event of the ages. While the earth is in a terrible tumult and tribulation and wars, and the Bible says a third of the population and a third of the waters and a third of the land, everything is being destroyed on the earth. At that same time, Christ has returned. The trump of God has sounded. He's taken us up in the rapture. And now we're in heaven. And I tell you what's happening in heaven is glorious. You don't want to miss that. It's the marriage supper of the lamb. It's incredible. And in fact, uh, I was thinking about the other day, a story that I'd heard about a great singer here in America who received an invitation to sing at a very high profile wedding. And she would, wanted to come and, and said that she would come, made a verbal agreement. She said, yes, uh, I'll, I'll do it. And so they scheduled her in to sing, and then she received an invitation. And in the invitation, it said, if you're going to be at the wedding reception, at the wedding and at the wedding reception, please fill this out and return the invitation so that we know that you're committed to coming. And she thought, you know, I'm the singer, so I really don't need to fill out an invitation because, you know, the, the groom and the bride have called me. They know me. 
uh, I know them and, and they're not going to have the wedding without me. They've already told me what time I sing. We've already done the rehearsal. I don't need to fill out the invitation. I don't need to respond to that invitation. And so sure enough, the day of the wedding, it's taking place in the Seattle Columbia Tower, you know, the big Space Needle with the moving restaurant and the wedding is taking place there on one floor and on the next floor is the reception. So she shows shows up with her husband and the wedding is glorious. The wedding is beautiful. And she sings at the wedding. And then afterwards, they go upstairs to the top floor, the VIP lounge for the marriage supper. And as her and her husband walk up they're walking across red carpet they've got on their very best best dress best suit everything is put together and they walk up to the top of the stairs and everybody is sitting at tables they're having a grand time and they look at her and her husband and there is a doorman with a registrar and he says uh give me your name please and they give their name he looks at me says i'm sorry but your name is not on there. And she says, uh, well, something's wrong because, uh, you know, my name is, and she gives her name. And then she says, and I just sang at the wedding. And he says, ma'am, I'm sorry. We don't have a returned invitation. It seems as though you did not accept the invitation to the marriage supper, to the reception, at which time they were ushered out literally through the people and out another door. And as they got in the truck and they went home, neither one really felt too embarrassed because they knew they didn't accept the invitation. But both of them were saved and born again. And they had to pull the car over just a little while later as they began to cry because they thought about all of the people to whom which have received an invitation from Christ to come unto him and to be ready for when he returns, that have yet to accept the invitation. I want to extend that invitation to you again today. Maybe you've never come to Jesus Christ and you need to, or maybe you've come to him and things have gotten in between you and the Lord. Maybe it's the hidden things that clog the heart of man, pride, bitterness, jealousy, unforgiveness, resentment, whatever it is, and you're, you don't have the joy of your salvation anymore. Today, God says, come. He, come. he says, come, come unto me again. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ. He's saying, come. I want to tell you, there is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shun. And you don't have to go to a devil's hell because 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross, the price was paid. His blood was shed, and just one drop of that blood will cleanse you from all of your sins, and you will know that you know that you know that you've been touched not by the hand of any man. As you're watching digitally, it's impossible for me to lay hands on you, but you've been touched by the hand of God, and everything is different for you. I want to pray with you, and I want to pray for you now. This is the most important decision that you will ever make, and that is a decision to accept an invitation to the event of the ages. It's a decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I come to you today. I ask that you would forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me. Save me. Deliver me. Fill me and use me for your glory. Let me never be the same again. Today, I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. I choose to make you the Lord of my life. I will live for you from this day forward. I'll never be the same again. I'll never go back. You are my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, wow, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. But that is just step one. You've repented of your sins. You've received new life. Now you need to get plugged in to a good church. Well, how do I do that, Pastor? Quickly, call the number. 
at the bottom of the screen. Send us a message if you're watching on social media, on YouTube. Go to the website that you see there. Let us know immediately. We need to connect with you. We need to send you resources. We need to help plug you in to a great Bible-believing, Spirit-filled church where you can be baptized in water and where you can receive discipleship and where you can receive the glorious infilling of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray quickly because my time is gone, and I want to believe God to deliver people right now, to set every captive free, and I want to believe God to touch you and heal your bodies, and I want to believe God to fill you with the glorious gift of the Holy Ghost. Would you pray with me? Pastors, help me pray here. Let's just send out a surge of the Holy Spirit across the airwaves right now. Father, we just all agree together that you would begin to touch your people right now. We curse and break every demonic spirit and stronghold that has held them captive. I command them be set free in Jesus' mighty name. Ears open, blind eyes begin to see, lame begin to walk in Jesus' mighty name right now. Those that have been vexed, oppressed by the devil, mental illness, depression, I command that spirit to go in Jesus' mighty name. Those that are possessed by unclean spirits, evil spirits. I command you be set free in Jesus' mighty name. We bind up every strong man and we command him to go out into the deep and never return. And Father, I ask now that you would send your Holy Spirit and baptize many around the world with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost as evidenced by speaking in other tongues. Let them receive that gift now that they may have power to do that which they could not do before. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And we give you glory for it. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. I love you. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Jordan. Great, great message. Now, please do what the man of God has told you to do. If you prayed that first prayer to see Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says this way in Romans 10, 13, that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't make a difference what country you're from. It doesn't make a difference if you're a male or female. It's a whosoever. Guess what? That incorporates the 8.2 billion people on the face of the earth right now. So if you prayed that prayer, guess what? You have now become born again. You're now saved. You're, you're now on your way to heaven by saying that simple prayer. You use your face for the very first time, and guess what? It works. So I want to encourage you as, you, as you prayed that prayer for the first time to receive Christ, guess what? As Pastor George was praying, I believe you also were touched and healed in your body. It doesn't make a difference if you've been battling sickness for a month, for, for, for a year, for 10 years, I believe Jesus has touched you. So I encourage you to check yourself right now. If you have pain in your back, I encourage you do something you couldn't do before. If you had pain in your shoulders, your arms, your legs, wherever it might have been, I encourage you to check yourself. I believe God has touched you. And if that's the case, if you've received Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have a miracle testimony, please call the number in your screen right now. King TV has people standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because we want to know your story, your victory, and your breakthrough. Please share your testimony. The Bible says in Luke 17, that think about this. Jesus healed 10 lepers. Jesus himself healed 10 lepers, but only one of them came back to give God praise. Make sure you're that one today. Call the number if you would. Thank you so much, Pastor Jordan. Appreciate you, sir. Our next pastor right now, get ready, King TV. This is Pastor Will Jones coming to us from God is Reaching Out Ministries based in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Pastor Will, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, bring forth the message God's giving you today for King TV. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Um, Thank you, Pastor Eric, for this for this for this time. I am so uh, honored and um, humbled. Um, I thank God for the two pastors that uh, came came before me. Two uh, powerful messages. Um, I pray that everybody's uh, everybody that's online that's listening, um, um, all hearts, all minds are are receptive to His Word, um, God's Word. Amen. Um, I'm gonna be talking about uh, the pursuit of holiness on today, and um. Well, when we're coming from um, 1 Peter 1, 15 to 16, you see, because God called us to be holy, but we have to be careful because holiness doesn't mean perfect. There's only one perfect person. That was Jesus Christ. So we're not we're not perfect, but we're perfect in him. Amen. And we can pursue for that perfect for that uh, perfection. Amen. So I want to talk about uh, holiness on uh, today. Amen. Um Man, I'm, 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 you got you to gotta forgive me. I'm, I'm just so excited what God is doing in my life, what I see what God is doing in other people's lives. I'm, I'm just so excited. And, um, man, I'm, I'm just I'm just glad for the calling that he has placed on, not just on my life, but everybody's life that's online. The two pastors, you, um, Pastor Eric, and, you know, I'm just I'm just I'm just happy 
Amen. I'm just glad to uh to be to be a part of this. Amen. But as uh first Peter 15 and 16, it reads, First Peter 1, 15 to 16. But as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Father God, we just thank you. We praise you. We give you all the honor, all the glory. We thank you, Father God, for this time, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for allowing us to just come before your people and minister, Father God. In the name of Jesus, not Father God, we just pray, Father God, for all minds, all hearts, we set them to your word, Father God. We just pray, Father God, that you just allow me to decrease, allow your spirit to increase as I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I think we got some technical issues. So okay. I have a question to ask. What are we pursuing? Are we pursuing holiness or are we pursuing the world? Because so many times it seems like, you know, we want to fit in with what the world is doing. God called us to be holy. He didn't call us to, you know, to fit in with the world. The world should be trying to fit in with us. Amen. So when we when we look at this, you know, and, I, and I'm talking to the believers, the the born again, the the, the fire baptized, you know, what are, what what are, what are we uh what are we pursuing? Because the last thing we want to do is we want to be a stumbling block, right? I know me, I don't want to I don't want to be a stumbling block, you know, because God saved us for a purpose. God saved us for a purpose. God saved us so we can go and get someone else. But I can't go get someone else if I'm still doing the same thing I was doing before God delivered me. So it doesn't make sense. So if I'm, and like I said, I'm not perfect. I, I don't. I, I never claim to be perfect. You get. You can ask my wife. <laughs> if my wife were here, she'd tell you I'm not perfect. I have flaws. Amen. But I have to pick up my cross daily. Amen. But the one thing I don't ever want to do since God saved me, I don't want people to look at me. And it's not about me, but I don't want people to to look at me and say, see. That's why I don't go to church. Look at him. He he going to the bar. He's doing this. He's he, he's womanizing. He's doing that. God called us to be holy. Amen. We should be pursuing holiness. That means we should be waking up in the morning. It, it all starts in the morning when we wake up. When you when we wake up in the morning, when we wake up in the morning, we say, Lord Jesus, I, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for be, being clothed in my right mind. I thank you that my feet can touch the floor. The small things, Lord, I thank you I can brush my teeth. The whole night. Oh, Lord, man, we should be thanking him for them things. I remember there was a time where I didn't have a floor. I didn't have a bed. I didn't. I used to sleep on a park bench. Amen. And God delivered me. So I know if he'll deliver me. I know he'll do it for someone else. I know he'll do it for that for that for that crackhead. I know he'll do it for that for that for that um for that woman that's that's selling her body. Amen. But we we have to be that light that shines. The scripture says no man light, lights a, lights a candle and puts it under bush bushel. He sits it on a hill so the world can see. Amen. We're that light. We're that light. Amen. We shouldn't we shouldn't be to the point. In uh in our in our in our spiritual walk that we see someone that's that's hurt or down and, and we and we look and we say, man, better than than me, or 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 you know what? Well, well, you know, man, Jesus walked, Jesus, uh Jesus came through the uh the gate, the uh the pool of Bethesda, and he saw the man laying at the pool. Jesus could have kept walking, but he said, no. And Jesus already knew. He said, I knew you've been there for 38 years. You were here 38 years. How many of us have been in, been in something for so, so long and we did not know how to get out of it? And then along came a man named Jesus that delivered us, that healed us, that brought us out of that situation. We're never too, we're never, we're never, we should never get to the point where we think that, um, I teach a lot on a, tug of war. I don't know if anyone uh, is flesh man, soul man, spirit man. Um, I teach a lot on um, on, on that and, and uh, you know, um, we're, we're, uh, we can never get to the point where we think that we're above tug of war or we're not going through something. The one thing I learned in life, no matter if you're walking with Christ or you're not walking with Christ, you're either going through something 
You're about to go through something or you coming out of something. That's just that's just life. But us as Christians, we have to look to the hills which comes our help. And our help comes from God. See, and here's the thing. We can't we can't look to Beyonce and Jay-Z. No, we can't look to them no more. We got to look to God. And if I'm looking to the world to, to help me out of my situation, and then someone sees me, and they're not, and they're not saved, we don't know what that person is going through. We don't know what that what they're what they're thinking of. So now they're looking at us because the world is watching. The world is watching. The world is watching all of us. The world is watching every single pastor on this line. They're watching you, Pastor Eric. They're watching you, Pastor Gibbons. They're watching. They're waiting. So the minute you slip up and go in that bar or slip up or, or, or do something of, of, of the world, and when I say bar, I mean bar because everywhere is a bar. Applebee's is a bar. So I'm not talking about Applebee's or anything like that. I'm talking about the minute you slip up and get drunk or anything like that, then what's the first thing they say? See, that's why I don't go to church. Now we're being now we're being a stumbling block. Amen. Because we look to the world instead of look to God. Amen. We have to look to God. Amen. We can't operate in a in a compromising spirit. And see, that's 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 what we see uh a lot. We see it with a lot of uh big name preachers. We see it with a lot of uh, you know, um celebrities and and, and, and things like that. You know, we can't live a, a compromising uh lifestyle. Um James 4 and 4 says uh, friendship with the world is and en en enemy with God. We can't, we can't, we can't love the world. We can we can love those that are in the world. Amen. Just like we we do we do outreach, we pray for them, we 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 and but but I can't go and say, okay, uh let me let me let me go and, and, and do what you do to try to to try try to win souls. No, no, no. We show them Christ, give them Christ. Amen. And we always got to remember, um, I know Pastor Eric, uh, I got like two minutes. I got, amen. We'll, um, we always got to remember, man, that, uh, listen, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is, that's, that's my, that's my scripture. That's my go-to scripture. Whenever I'm going through something or whatever, um, trouble comes my way or anything. And, and because I can't react the way I used to. Amen. Second, what is it? Second Corinthians five, uh, no, uh, two. What's it? Second Corinthians uh, five seventeen. Amen. Um, I'm a new creation in Christ. We hold old old things are passed away. We're new creations, and we're new creations in Christ. We can't do the things that we used to. We can't fight the way we used to fight. <laughs> Amen. My fight now is I pray. <laughs> Amen. I pray. I pray. And I used to be I used to be a little violent in that, but no, I pray, man. I, I pray for that brother. I pray for that sister. I can't cuss you out. I can't cuss you out. I don't fight like that no more. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm too busy. I'm, I'm, I'm too busy in, in, in a spiritual battle. Amen. Fighting demons off me, fighting, fighting demons and, and, and praying and praying for other and praying for other folks. Amen. So people can see, if people can see the God in us, then we, then we can bring more people to Christ because we're world changers. But we gotta, we gotta, we gotta walk it. We gotta talk it. And, and like I said, you know, we just gotta continue to, uh, to, to just let our light shine. Amen. And, and someone will see that light. Um, Pastor Eric, I'm gonna um, close out in prayer. Amen. Um, I thank you for having me on. Uh, I thank you, um, Pastor Gibbons. I thank you, um, Pastor Rachel. Amen. Father God, we just thank you. We praise you, Father God. We just pray, Father God, that all hearts and minds were receptive to your word, Father God. We just pray, Father God, that we can continue to pursue holiness, Father God, so that we can bring others to your kingdom, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We just pray, Father God, that just, you just open up our spiritual eyes, Father God, and allow us to see, Father God, that it is not about us. Oh Father God, in the name of Jesus, it is all about populating the kingdom of heaven and deep pop Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Will. Appreciate that message. Now, listen, as he said, you know what? No one's perfect. And all, all, all of us have seen and fallen short of the glory of God, the Bible says. Now, listen, if you if you haven't received Christ, as you heard Pastor uh, Givens, you've heard Pastor Jordan, you just heard Pastor Will, guess what? He just shared his heart. He shared his testimony with you. He shared how God wants to impact your life. And all you got to say is, God, come into my life. Forgive me my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Make me new. If you said a prayer like that, just as simple as that, but you believed in your heart and you confessed it with 
your mouth. Guess what? Romans 10, 9 says, you're born again. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven. So here's what I want you to do. If you pray to pray, receive Christ as Savior, listen, please do me a favor. There's a number at the bottom of the screen. Call that number and tell King TV, I just came to Christ. You know, maybe maybe as you heard Brother Will, maybe you were away from God. Maybe you received Christ 10, 15, 20 years ago, and you're away from Christ, but you heard that message. You heard his heart for people, to touch people, to encourage people, because God goes after everyone. It's not that sometimes worlds or society pushes people away, right? Maybe based upon the, the location they're in or the situation, the clothes they're wearing, but God doesn't do that. God sees the heart and he wants to touch you. He wants your soul to be saved. He wants you to be in heaven for eternity. And again, that's his heart. So listen, if you pray to prayer, receive Christ as Savior, and you said a simple prayer like I just prayed moments ago, please do me a favor. Call that number on your screen right now and tell King TV, guess what? I just came to Christ. It's the greatest prayer you can ever pray. If you prayed that prayer, you got to find yourself a good full gospel church. Do that as soon as you possibly can. Pray and talk to God every single day because he wants to talk to you. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, we can cast our cares upon our Heavenly Father. You know why? Because he cares for us. And you, then you got to also get yourself a Bible. Read a Bible every single day. Just as you want to eat natural food every day, read God's word every day. Do those three things. Watch how God will change your life forever. Team, I want to say thank you for your time today. Um, we've, gone, we've we've ministered a little over an hour into 182 nations in the world right now. The phone lines have been jam-packed. They've been packed out several times. They've been getting messaging from King Television. So listen, if you try to call the number to maybe share a miracle testimony or maybe the salvation experience or maybe being delivered and set free, listen, don't, don't be discouraged by the number being busy because we have literally thousands of people responding to these messages. But listen, I encourage you, just wait four, five, six minutes, call back later. Later, and people will be standing by to listen to you, talk to you. They want to talk about next steps. They want to, they want to rejoice with you. So please don't delay. Call the number when you can. And if it does get busy because of the call volumes, just call maybe just, again, five, six, seven minutes down the road. Okay. Thank you so much for doing it. Team, thank you for your time today. Again, one thing we never get back is time. And you just minister the gospel, again, to all these wonderful nations of the world. And we, the Bible says we lift Jesus up. He draws all men and women unto him. And today has been an amazing day of salvation, a, may, a, day, a day of miracles. We're getting miracle testimonies. People of blind eyes coming open, deaf ears coming out, stop, pain le leaving people's backs and arms and legs instantly. So we just give God praise for what he's done. For those of you who watch this network on a regular basis, I always encourage you, pray for Pastor John and Rachel. They're doing all they can to win souls literally all over the world. And for those that watch King TV on a regular basis as well, I always like to encourage you, put your trust, your hope and faith in God. You know why? He cares for you. Until next time, this is Eric Smith saying we love you and we're praying for you.